In this video, we're going to learn how to balance a redox equation. Now, these, uh, these things generally take place in uh, water, so in an aqueous solution. So water is actually able to participate in these types of reactions sometimes. Um, as well, to the medium that they are uh, within could be acidic or it could be basic. So we're going to have the acidic molecule here, H3 or H plus and OH minus, possibly participating in a reaction. And so if they're participating in the reaction, they're actually going to need to be used in the balanced equation. So we've got some general rules to follow, and they don't apply to every example, but uh, you sort of just use them as needed. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to write an unbalanced equation. This might be the first time in chemistry that you've actually had to do an unbalanced equation, but we need to do that first because we need to determine the oxidation numbers. If you're not sure what that is, it is, was in a previous video for 9.1. Make sure you check that out. Um, once we've actually gone about and completed the equation, we're going to add some coefficients and it's going to be related to the electrons that are transferred. Then once you've got that, and by the way, these numbers are going to be on the, uh, uh, on the reactant side, and then you're going to go to the product side and you can actually then go balance it by inspection. And then at so that point, sometimes you realize that we don't have any oxygens there and uh, to balance the oxygen, we're actually going to add some water and, uh, sort of go from there. Once we've added that water, then we need to go back and possibly add some H pluses to balance the hydrogens out or OH minuses. But uh, again, you'll see how both of these things work. So there's sort of multiple steps. And like I said, not everyone we do is going to include step four. Not everyone we're going to do is include a full step three. So we'll just have to work through uh, three examples to see all of these scenarios. So we're going to balance this using the redox method. And um, one way I've done this is to say that this is done in water and then actually go ahead and include H2O. But I've just written H2O in here for our equation. So this is actually, uh, this is the full equation. It's not balanced. That's what we're going to figure out here. So first thing we need to do is start to assign oxidation numbers. And uh, you can start anywhere you want. I'm going to start with oxygen just because it's in its gaseous elemental state. So it has an oxidation number of zero. And if you go to the periodic table and you look up oxygen's charge, it should be minus two. We actually have a couple of oxygens and fortunately they're both at minus two. So we're just gonna treat oxygen as having uh, undergone a minus two change. So oxygen has gained electrons to go from zero to minus two. Electrons are negative. So when you gain them, things get more negative. This is reduction. Oil rig is what I always think of. Oil rig, reduction is gaining. I like that one. So two electrons have been gained. Now we can look at hydrogen next. It's got a charge of plus one and plus one. So that one's not going to change. Again, those just came from the periodic table and hydrogen came first. So it's going to be positive in that situation. So the other element is going to be sulfur. And to, to say that sulfur is minus two, again, it's from the periodic table, but you can even create a little equation here with your oxidation numbers to figure that one out. Again, that was from the previous section. We won't go into that in this video here. Uh, and again, same thing over here. I guess technically just a quick re refresher is if oxygen is minus two and there's two oxygens, that makes it minus four. So to offset that, sulfur would be plus four. So the very thing I said I wouldn't get into, I just got into on that example. So what has sulfur done? It has lost electrons. It has gone from minus two. It's now at minus four. It's been oxidized. Oil rig, oxidation is loss. And we have a total uh, of six electrons lost here. So I've just rewritten the equation. And uh, we need, a, well, there's a little adjustment we need to make because we have to deal with these in terms of molecules and not atoms. And this oxygen gas is the problem here. So let's take a quick look. So the first molecule is the H2S. And we found that there are six electrons per uh, sulfur atom. And that's fine because there is only one sulfur in this compound. So there's sort of nothing to do there. So this one's actually going to stay the same. So we've got six electrons. Remember that. Now oxygen here we discovered is gaining two electrons per oxygen atom. The problem is that there are two oxygen atoms, meaning that we actually have four electrons transferred in this reaction. So four is now gonna be the magic number we need to remember. We've got a six and we've got a four. What we need to do is find a lowest common denominator. So if you quickly think about mathematics, um, probably 12 is gonna be our lowest common denominator. Each six and four divide evenly into 12, which is our lowest number. <clears throat> So what we need to do now is we need to reflect that uh, uh, this 12 is the lowest common denominator by looking at six and saying, okay, we actually need to multiply all of this by two because two times six will give us 12. 
onto our other side of the equation here. We've got four, so we need to ask ourselves what number times four will give us 12? And of course, that's going to be three. So three times 12. So this two we've discovered and this three we discovered are actually gonna end up being the coefficients that we're gonna go back and put in to our equation here. So let's clear this up. There's our balanced equation. And like we said, we're gonna put a two in front of that and a three in front of that. Now the rest of this is just normal balancing equations. So if I look at what we've got here, we've got two sulfurs. So what am I gonna put in front of the sulfur? I'm gonna put a two there. Then what we need to do is we can say, okay, we've got four hydrogens here. We have two hydrogens on that side. We need a two in front of that. And uh, so that one is balanced. <clears throat> so essentially what we just did is we just kind of balanced an equation uh, in a different sort of way, but we balanced it the same way you've been balancing equations for years. We didn't need to get into all those electrons and transferred, but it, it did work. But what happens if this is actually carried out in an acidic solution or even a basic solution? We've got a couple extra molecules involved. So let's take a look at an example. Now you'll notice at the top I've underlined this reaction is happening with an acid. So here is our, uh, our equation. It's got tons of different charges. This would be somewhat difficult to balance if we just kind of went ahead and tried to do it. So we've got some steps. We've got some rules to follow. <coughs> first things first is let's figure out the oxidation numbers. <coughs> um, we've got, again, I like to start with the gas, the, the one that's in the uh, elemental state. Iodine has a charge of zero. So over here with the other iodine, we know that oxygen always has a charge of minus two in this situation. So technically there's minus six here. The whole thing equals minus one. Again, go back to the oxidation number video and you realize that this is a plus five. So what's actually going on here is iodine has lost electrons. It's gone from zero to plus five. Now what else we got here? Five electrons lost. Again, over on this, uh, the left side here, we've got our minus two set up for our oxygen. So that's minus six, but that which should equal minus one. So what's the charge of chlorine? It just also coincidentally happens to be plus five. And as we look to the other side of the equation, we've got chlorine as minus one. And I mean, it does say it right there, but it would also be on the periodic table if you didn't know. So what's chlorine done? Uh, chlorine has gained electrons to go from plus five to minus one. So we've actually had a gaining of six electrons. That should say gain there, not lost. So that's six electrons gained. Now, again, we're gonna have to do our common denominator stuff here. Uh, even before we do that, again, we got to realize that this iodine is, there's two iodines involved here. So if we've got five electrons per iodine, that means we have 10 electrons per uh, iodine molecule. This is always per molecule. Onto the other side here, the, uh, the chlorate thing, it uh, gains six electrons, but there's only one chlorine there. So that one's going to stay at six electrons. Okay. Now we can do the lowest common denominator between six and 10. If you think six times 10, 60, but it's actually a little bit lower. We actually get 30 as our lowest common denominator. So what value do we need to multiply 10 by to get 30? Well, that'll be three. So again, this three is what's gonna eventually go in front here. And on the other side, what times five is 30? That's, I'm sorry, what times six is 30? It is, again, five, I always do that, I always give away the answer. And that five is what's gonna go in front on that side. So let's clean this up. Let's add our coefficients in. And now we can go about kind of regularly balancing this. This shouldn't be too hard with the chlorines because we have five chlorines there. So what do we want to put in front of that chlorine? We want to put a five. And then you can count up the iodines. I think we have six iodines here. So over to this side, we want to place a six in front of that. Now, like our last example, we were done. But what hasn't been balanced in this reaction is actually two things. Firstly, the oxygen hasn't been balanced. If we count all this up on the left side of our equation, we actually have 15 oxygens. Five times three is 15. Over on the other side, we have six times three, which is 18 oxygens. So we're three oxygens short on the left-hand side. So what are we gonna do? One of our rules says that we have to add water. We are going to add water to balance the oxygens. Keep in mind water is obviously H2O. We've got one oxygen. So if we want to get three more oxygens on this side, we're simply going to have to add three H2Os over to the reactant side. And that's what we're going to do. We're going to add in our three oxygens. But now we got another problem. Now the hydrogen's not balanced because we have six hydrogens on this side and we have none on our product side. So because this is done in acid, we need to remember that we're now going to deal with the H plus molecule. So if we need six hydrogens on the right, we are simply gonna place six H pluses on the right side. 
So the last thing to, to confirm here is do the charges on both sides of our equation add up? We're not used to having charges in equations, but this one we actually do. So if we look, what's the overall charge here? Well, let's see, water, there's no charge. Iodine, there's no charge, but we have five times minus one. So we actually have a, a net charge of minus five on this side. What about this side? Well, again, we have five times minus one is minus five. We have six times minus one, which is minus six. So there's technically minus 11 there, but we all now we have this plus six. Minus 11 plus six equals minus five. So we, in fact, also balance the charge um, by balancing the oxygens and the hydrogens. So it's a way to double check that you've done it properly. And personally, I have found mistakes. I got through an example and realized I'd written charge down wrong and I didn't know it till this point and I was able to fix that. The last thing we wanna do is take a look at what happens when it's in a base. Base is OH. What I've actually done here is I've actually used the exact same example because you would solve it the exact same way. You'd go through the steps of the oxidation numbers. Uh, you'd end up balancing your equation. And so with this one, that's where I started at. I sort of skipped all those initial steps and we've arrived at this point where we need to, again, balance the oxygens. That's gonna be our first move here. Uh, <clears throat> and so to balance that, it actually repeats the earlier step where we find those three waters, don't forget that. The next step we did was we balanced the six hydrogens we added. So what you actually do is you actually, again, add the six hydrogens to the other side. So this equation right now looks exactly the same as the one we ended with in the last question. But now we have that extra step of this is actually being done in a base. So this is where the OH molecule comes in. So we don't want this to be acidic, we want it to be basic. So the first thing we're gonna do is we are going to add six OHs to this side, so six and six. If this was a 20, you'd add 20 OHs. If it was a 500, you'd add 500 OHs. The whole point is we wanna neutralize the acid and end up with water. Uh, so whatever we do to the right side, we have to do to the left side. So we're also adding six OHs onto the left side. Now the next step is we're gonna collect everything up here. So I'm gonna erase those uh, six H pluses and six OHs and rewrite them as six H2Os. Now, now we actually have H2O on both sides of our equation, don't we? So we can simplify this. So I'm gonna cross out the three on that side. I'm gonna cross out the six on that side and quick math says six waters minus three waters is three waters. So we actually have a net of three H2Os over on this side here. So let's get rid of that one over there We'll again, clear that side. We'll write our three H2Os in. And the last thing we need to do is just bring the six OHs up into our equation. And there we have done it. So there's the extra step when something is basic. And again, check the charges. Double check my math. I got minus 11 on that side. Double check my math, minus 11 on that side. So that balances.